All right, so if we take the derivative of the shape function um, times the derivative of psi with respect to x, and then using the chain rule, all right, so here's the derivative of um, shape function node i with, uh, times the psi, derivative of psi with respect to x, uh, we get the, ooh, here's that second derivative times the shape function node i plus, uh, what did the term we see here? All right, so if we rearrange this uh, algebraically, because right, we want to isolate this and then substitute for it. So we're, solving, we're isolating this uh, second order derivative and getting the other terms by themselves here. <clears throat> so we're going to substitute equation 3, which we just had on the previous slide at the, at the bottom there, uh, into equation 1 and solve. And knowing that the shape function is this in terms of the uh, locations of the nodes and the length. And we have our uh, psi is the shape function node i uh, plus the psi at node uh, i plus the shape function node j times the psi at node j. Uh, we can substitute those in, and what happens is right here is the expansion of that first second order term. So we have this term and this term of the second order derivative. And then we have the other, here's the uh, first order, oops, first order of psi there, and then uh, uh, third coefficient. Alright, so if we uh, integrate these guys out, we come up with this term. Alright, and ooh, look at that. Looks like those two guys are going to cancel themselves out, right? Alright, and then we have term down here, C1. Alright, uh, actually, we got X1, XJ. Okay, good. so we're going to substitute equation 3, that was the one uh, at the bottom of the previous slide, uh, into equation 1. So equation 1 was the one for uh, the residual at node i. Uh, and solve, I'm gonna, and knowing that we got the shape function at node i, and we have this uh, ex expanded here form for finding psi at any location in our element. Right, so the residual at node i becomes, here's our first term. All right, so we've expanded uh, our second order derivative into these two terms. Uh, here's our first order term for psi, and then here's the, uh, the coefficient of 3. All right, so here what we've done is we've gone through with the integration of this first term. All right, so going through that integration of the first term creates these, these two terms. Um, the second term has been expanded, so what we've substituted for psi right here. And that's where we get everything here that's in parentheses. So we've done this, we did the substitution of psi, which is up here at the top. And then for the shape function in node i, that's what is right here. So that's the shape, shape function in node i was substituted in there. And then the last two terms here, or three terms, the first two are from the integration of the first order psi term. And then the last term there is the integration of our coefficient of three. All right, so we're going to make a substitution here. And so go back and forth if you need to. So we know the shape function um, at node i is 1 at, at node i, and shape function for node i is 0 at node j. So knowing those two, we can plug in and we can uh, get uh, solve this one further. Uh, so we get the uh, psi 1, the psi at node i and psi minus psi at node j for that uh, function there. And then uh, these guys are pretty much what they were on the previous slide. Right, we can do the same thing. So equation three was the, the second order, expand second order into first order uh, derivatives. And equation two was the one for the, the residual at node j. So we get basically the very, very similar form. So here's residual at node i up here, and residual at node j down here. And we're going to take those and we're going to put those in a matrix form. Right, so remember, psi is the temperature, or can be the temperature for our problem. Right, so we're going to assemble this into matrix form. So here are the two residuals here. Right. Here's the first part of that second order derivative. Here's the second part of that second order derivative. Uh, this is that first order term. And then here's that the last term there, the third coefficient. All right, so setting the residual uh, equations to zero, 
right? So if we set these two guys equal to zero, we can uh, isolate this guy, this last term by itself, equal to um, all the rest of the terms. All right. So again, that's a lot, but uh, again, we're going to we're going to go back and see, get more sense of what's happening. But I wanted to see it from a general term, and then we'll go back for it. So notice the overall form here, though. I mean, so I'll go back real quick one slide. So that's what we got here. This looks kind of familiar, right? This equation. Right, so we have these two, what looks like stiffness matrices. Right, uh, what do we got over here? Contributes to the element conductance and load based on the boundary conditions. All right, so that, that's in the second order term, so that makes sense. Contributes to the conductance. All right, this is the element conductance, or a, you can think of it as a stiffness, right? The stiffness matrix. Uh, this is also an element conductance, but in this particular, particular problem, it, it's uh, convection for our problem, this convection term. And finally, we have a thermal loading. So the, the um, or while we had a load matrix due to force in our structural analysis, in our thermal analysis, is a thermal load. All right. So looking at that first term, all right, what we've done here is we've substituted in. Let me go back here. All right, we've substituted back in for C1. We've substituted in our Ka. So for our first um, term there. All right, so for our stiffness term, all right, so our first stiffness term for C1, we're substituting back in Ka, and just as we did up here. And this is the conduction along the fin. All right, so conduction coefficient times area over length, and then we have these stiffness values in here. So it concerns conduction along the fin. This next term, we're substituting back in for C2, our H times the perimeter. All right, this is the convection loss from the surfaces of the fin. So for we're going down the fin, your fin's like this, we're going this way, right? This second matrix up here refers to the convection uh, along the surface as we move along it. Whereas this one refers to this conduction along the fin. All right. And this last one is the convection load from, uh, from the fluid. All right. So it's load from the tip. So it could be a tip condition. All right. So assuming the third boundary condition, oops. Actually, it's not. I guess not necessarily from the tip, it could be uh, also from the side here, but we'll, we'll see how this plays out here. All right, so uh, let's look at this. So the third boundary condition all right, from slide six, we talked about the three different options we had for the boundary condition at the tip. The third one was we had convection uh, from the tip. So this is the temperature at the end of our, um, at the end of our uh, fin. So therefore, if we put the equation together here, uh, we have, uh, Conduction that would happen into the tip, we would have convection from the tip, and we'd have these other terms. All right. So basically, what we're doing here is we're looking at if we had an element here, we have node i and node j, and if j was at the tip, it would be the one that's interfacing, having the convection uh, at the tip. So that's why there's no terms here. This equals zero um, at node i, and then we have convection here for all the, the j terms. So there's the boundary condition, all right? Boundary condition for the convection matrix and then a force function uh, because of the temperature in the fluid. All right, so both those only apply to the last element at the tip because that's where that, that shows up. We have the convection from the tip. All right, so let's combine the whole thing together. We got our stiffness, right? we got our temperatures, and we got our forcing functions. All right, so only for the tip element, right, we combine all three of these things where we have our uh, first stiffness matrix, right, our second and our third boundary condition matrix. All right, so in that case, our total element stiffness contribution is one from conductance, one from convection to the side, and one from convection from the tip. So on all the other elements, we exclude this one, but except for the tip. Right? So exclude from all 
the last element if you know he lost from the tip. So if we don't assume convection of the tip, then we'd exclude this. So again, we'll get practice with this. I'll show you how this works. All right, for the forcing function, again, you want to include uh, the C3 term that we already had, and then we also have boundary condition. All right, so we can exclude this one as well if we don't have convection from the tip. All right. So, okay, hopefully this all looks familiar. All right, so we're going to, again, from kind of the stiffness perspective, now we're going to assemble a global stiffness matrix and load the matrix for the whole finite element model. All right, so solve the same way as we did with the mechanics solution. So you just need to put all those uh, things together here. All right, so you can find more examples in textbooks and online to give you other uh, experiences with that. All right, so to find heat loss, so if we have all those things, we want to find heat loss. So uh, I'll show you here with Q. Uh, I, I also see heat transfer, and for in heat transfer, I use Q dot, so uh, a rate, heat transfer rate. So due to convection on the surfaces, uh, basically we need to sum the Q dot that happens through uh, all the surfaces. So here's our um, convection Q dot equation. So HP, we don't have area here because we're going to integrate along the x direction, so it's just the perimeter, and then we have the temperature of our uh, surface minus the temperature of the fluid. All right, so substituting in for the, the temperature equation, that's what's coming in here. So substituting in here uh, the shape function form of our temperature, All right, substitute in there, and so we're going to substitute now in for the shape functions, and you can integrate those with respect to x, and you come up with this form of our equation to determine the uh, total heat loss uh, from a one element. All right? So not the whole fan, but just particular one element. All right? So again, H is the convective heat transfer coefficient, P is the thin perimeter, and L is the element length. 